and welcome back to Tech with AGR. And in this video, we are not going to be upgrading the Mac Pro. That's coming later. But right now, we're going to be upgrading my current daily computer, which is a 2011 iMac. So this is a 2011 21.5 inch iMac. I've had it for just over a year and a half now. And I have really enjoyed my time using it. I thought it was a really good machine, solid, worked very well. The only thing was, I thought it was time for some upgrades. The machine was getting a little bit slow, the old hard drive wasn't coping that well. And I thought it could do with an i7. So that's what I went and did. So after deciding I wanted to upgrade the iMac, I hopped online and found these components. A 500 gig cr crucial SSD, a bracket, an OWC temperature sensor, so the fan doesn't go crazy when I install an SSD, and an i7 2600S, which, which was the max that this 2011 21.5 inch iMac could handle. In its current form, the iMac has an i5 2400S, which is a 2.5 gigahertz quad core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 megabyte AMD 6770 graphics card. I was going to upgrade the graphics to something like an Nvidia 765M, but then I thought, nah, it's not worth it yet. I may as well hold on to the boot screen for a while, and then when the iMac does have failing graphics, then I'd swap it out later down the road. But at the moment, touch wood, because the graphics appear to be working fine, I thought I could just leave them as they are and upgrade to these four components. The thermal sensor, SSD, bracket, and the new CPU. So then, without further ado, let's shut this machine down and get, in, get into tearing it apart. Let's begin. So first up, because this is a logic board out job, we should remove the RAM from the iMac, which is what I'll do now. There we go, the hatch is out. And now on to removing the RAM itself. You just pull that, you just remove the tab and gently pull. And there is the RAM. Just comes out. And the same must be done on the other side. And that is all the RAM out of the iMac. Next up I'll be removing the glass panel that covers the LCD. This panel is held on magnetically, hence you just need some suction cups. Now you've removed the front panel, you can go ahead and put it aside, and we'll move on to the actual LCD. Next up, you have to remove the eight screws that hold in the display. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do that now. Now when removing the display, do bear in mind that there are connectors behind it, so you have to pull it forward gently, and once you've done that, then you can unplug connectors, and then you'll be inside the machine. Now on to removing the hard drive itself, and swapping it for an SSD in a bracket. So to remove the hard drive you need to undo the two screws which hold the hard drive mounting plate in. The mounting plate is proprietary to the iMac 
but is simple to remove and attach to a new bracket. Now I'll change over the original hard drive mounting bracket to the SSD bracket. To do that you'll need a T10 Torx screwdriver just to unscrew these bolts and then the bracket should just pop off. And then, have to, and then you'll have to do the same for these pins at the bottom here. Now on to the optical drive and the optical drive fan. The optical drive is he held in by four screws. One, two, three, and the fourth one, which is slightly concealed in my case, but there. I'll remove them now. Before the optical drive can fully come out, you just have to remove the small black and grey connector, which is the optical drive thermal sensor. Once that's pulled out, the optical drive should just be able to be a, come out of the machine. I miss when Apple products are simple to work on, because this seems such a, this seems such a doddle to get this optical drive out. And now, once un, once you've unplugged its data cable, which is right here, the drive is free from the machine. And there you have it, you have just taken out the optical drive. Fantastic. Now onto the optical drive fan. Now the optical drive's out of the way, we can move on to the fan. Which has one T10 Torx screw right in the corner. And that completely frees the optical drive fan from the machine's chassis. It also does have one connector which needs to be unplugged. And with that, the optical drive fan is out. Now on to unplugging various sensors. And finally, to end all the cable unplugging, now I've unplugged the IR sensor, I can pull out the IR board. And now that's done, I can move on to the next stage of the process. Now I'll remove the audio connector. just comes out and can be laid to rest at the side just like that. Next up I'll be undoing seven screws which hold in the logic board the first one being here, second one being here and so on three, four, five, six and seven. Let me do that now Now on to removing the power supply with these four screws here. Before attempting to unplug the power supply's AC and DC cords, it's better to remove these plastic wall housings that hold the power supply in place. 
Once these guides are off, it's a lot easy to lot easier to remove the power supply itself. Turning the supply over, we see it's two things: extremely dusty, and the cables themselves. To undo the cable, you have to unplug and pull at the same time, which is a bit difficult on camera. So I'll cut the camera and I'll pick it. I'll pick it up straight after I've removed the power supply itself. Now, after an hour of work, we can finally remove the logic board from the Mac itself. Here we go. Now you have to remove the two connectors on the back of the logic board before it's finally free from the Mac. Once again, this is rather difficult to film, so I'll get back to you right after I've done that. Finally, after painstakingly toiling for hours, I have finally got the motherboard free from the chassis. Now we have to remove the th motherboard thermal sensor, which is right here. I say motherboard thermal sensor, I mean CPU thermal sensor, what am I saying? So let me quickly just peel off the tape, which holds that in place. And then unplug that small cable. It's a very small and delicate cable, so I advise being very careful. Now that small CPU thermal sensor has been unplugged, I can go ahead and undo these five screws. The four T8 screws being one, two, three, four, and one T10 screw. These hold in the CPU bracket, the CPU's mounting bracket, and the heatsink. The final stage of this teardown, I guess, is removing the old CPU and swapping it for the new CPU. Well, I say new. I mean an upgraded CPU. So to remove the old CPU, just push down on the little metal bracket and push it out from underneath. And then, that gives us enough scope to pull the top panel off and that releases the CPU. Now I will just install the new i7 and then clean off the heatsink and put the logic board back together. So now I have reattached the CPU and I've reattached the CPU thermal sensor. I'm going to put the iMac all back together and then I'll see you on the other side when it hopefully it'll be working. Catch you then. Well, that was sooner, sooner than expected, I forgot to install the OWC thermal sensor, which is a key part of this process because when converting your iMac's old hard drive to an SSD or to a newer hard drive, you'll find that the old hard drive had a thermal sensor which managed the temperature of it, but the new SSD or new hard drive does not have that. So that means your fans will be going at full speed all the time. One way to counter this is getting an, an app like Max Fan Control, which is your friend in this case, which sorts out that issue. But I thought, let's do, this, let's do the job completely and utterly properly. That's why I went out and bought this OWC thermal sensor for £40. I'm, I'm going to show you how to install it. Okay, the first step is locate your SATA cables and locate the larger cable and click it on to this end of the OWC thermal sensor. There we go. Then you have to tuck it under the uh, graphics heatsink and then connect it right here. So now you've installed your SATA power cable and your SATA data cable 
the, the last stage of installing the thermal sensor is actually installing the thermal sensor itself, which is this little unit that sticks on to the SSD here, or the hard drive. For hard drives, try and stick it near the spindle in the middle, and for the SSD, try put it there, right near the connection, right near the connectors. So to finally stick the thing, you're going to have to pull off the thin piece of tape on the front. And now it's off, you can go ahead and stick it right next to the connectors on the SSD. Just as, just as I've done there. And there you have it. With a bit of cable management by tucking the cables from the connect the heat the thermal sensor just underneath the hard drive bracket, we now have a relatively clean looking setup on the inside of the iMac. And with that, let's finish off the installation of the LCD and the outer panel, and then hopefully we can power the iMac on. See you then. Here we go, the first power up of the upgraded iMac. Oof. I think we have life. So you joined me a week later and I've been using this iMac as my main computer for the past week now. And I can report that I've had no issues and it's been great. The user experience has been far better than what it was, and the machine is just overall a lot faster and slicker. Anyway, onto those specs. They went from this... ...to this. So now you've seen the specs of this iMac, I can tell you that the upgrades have been fantastic. The SSD is half the boot up time, and for that reason alone I felt it was worth it. And the i7, though it doesn't seem like a massive upgrade, coming from that 2.5GHz i5 to this 2.8GHz i7, you really do notice the extra power that the i7 has, even in day-to-day -day tasks. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, consider subscribing. It's completely free, and it would be, and it would be massively appreciated. And also, hit that like button if you like the video. And when you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell, because then you'll be reminded each time I make a new upload. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.